Hey, welcome back to another episode of Ego on Break. I'm your host, Dynamite J. Andrews. Got the Mississippi Madman, Logan Creed, sitting to my left. And today we're going to kind of uh, probably be all over. Let's say we're going to talk about uh, MLW Underground, maybe talk about the recent Mom's Trash Can Toy Show, um, or Swap Meet. I think that's what they were calling it, the Swap Meet. And, uh, you know, whatever else now, comes up in discussion. Huh? Road Warrior Animal. Yeah, Road Warrior an Animal did pass away, sadly. Um, you know, I'm sure it's rough on his family and all his fans, that kind of thing. So definitely want to send prayers out to them. Um, definitely send our thoughts as well. What was your favorite uh, animal? You got a favorite animal moment? If I had to go back to something, I would probably go back to the scaffold match. Okay. With the, uh, the Midnight Express. Okay. Uh, that's just the one I think of. Uh, they aren't known for five star matches. They right. have brawls. Right. You know, I mean, but as far as a moment that I remember, as far as the Legion of Doom or Road Warriors, it's definitely the scaffold match. Yeah. Um, I watched uh, an interview from a Survivor Series, mm -hmm. and it was, I mean, it was it's horrible, but it was like the day before he passed away. Like, it was just a coincidence. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the Ultimate Warriors team. Of the Ultimate Warrior, the Road Warriors, and the Modern Day Warrior, Kerry Von wow. Eric. So I thought that was pretty cool. Of course, they weren't the Road Warriors. Of course, Kerry wasn't the Modern Day Warrior. He was the Texas Tornado, and they were LOD. <laughs> but still, it was kind of like somebody put that together on purpose, yeah. you know, because it was like, yeah. we got all the Warriors in one spot. So uh, that was pretty cool. And like I say, it wasn't great promos by anybody. Um, but it was just kind of cool that all of them was there, so... I still I remember when you were talking about before Chikara went under for a bunch of bull crap, uh, doing a three way team, and we just said put them with LOD. Uh, uh, demolition. With Demolition, yep. but make it that version of yeah. you know, yeah, that would Legion be cool. of Demolition. Yeah, the Legion I of Demolition. I still wish somebody would have done that. Yeah, I, it would have been know super if it ever cool. happened, but I doubt that would have been so cool. I doubt it, but it would have been pretty awesome. Like, uh, I thought it was a neat idea to do. So uh, When he went to Japan, who was his tag team partner? Do you remember? I always forget. I can remember Heidenreich, I remember Hulk, but there was one more, and it was Hulk's tag partner, actually. Yeah, it was uh, Suzuki, I think. Ken, was it? Kenzu, Suzuki, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm horrible with names. Yeah, of me people, too, especially. Of people that I don't watch a lot. I mean, mm. I know the gimmick, it was like the Hellraisers. Yeah, I saw and, two uh, matches, that's all I've ever Like, seen. I can even point the guy out in a lineup, yeah, but I'm, I just can't remember his name. Um, and I'm pretty sure Suzuki's probably not right. <laughs> think about it. I don't know. Um, I just know he went to Japan and did the uh, did the gimmick, and the animal got ticked off about it because yep. it wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and I mean, in reality, it was the same thing but different. You know, I mean, he wasn't the Legion of Doom, he wasn't the Road Warriors, he was the Hellraisers, but it was the exact same characters. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you know, the, another bad thing I remember, but I remember it because Animal, mm -hmm. when Sid jumped off and broke his leg. Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be Animal's debut into WCW return. Oh, okay. And they were trying to, like, do something. Because, like, this guy's supposed to come out and make this huge save. And now Sid's laying there and his leg's like this. Yeah. And they're, like, Road Warriors in the back going, what do I do? And he's like, uh... Nothing. That's what you do. You <laughs> wait till tomorrow. But I think he eventually come out and made the save. But Sid's, Sid's still laying there and his yeah. leg's like this going the wrong way. And I'm That's like, crazy. what the hell? Yeah, I'll, but, uh... I went, when I was young, went to a uh, event here in Jackson at the Coliseum, and I wanted a Stone Cold shirt. And my dad was like, oh, we'll get the shirt after we leave or whatever. And when we go to leave, they were sold out. So I got an LOD shirt. And, uh, yeah, they wasn't sold out. So, <laughs> um, but it had, like, animals face on one side and hawks on the other. And so it was, like, it was kind of a crappy shirt because you didn't get both people on the front or the back. You got one on each side. Uh, and that's probably why it was still there after the show. But I got it in a Mankind shirt, so I kind of remember that. But well, you know, he's the one that came up with the LOD name, right? Mm -hmm. Because he said that... Uh, what's he said, I watched a cartoon one time. Well, they, they said that he would <laughs> drive them crazy because he was watching uh, Super Friends. Mm -hmm. And they would always say, back at the Legion of Doom... And that's where it comes from. Yep. I'm like, technically nowadays they'd sue the hell out of you. Yeah. But back then they didn't do that. Well, I mean, could they? Because, I mean, you were named after a building. 
You know what I mean? So it's not Still even. It was DC property. It is, but there's like limits and stuff. I don't like, know how all that works, but I mean, right now I just read where the people that did uh, Randy Orton's tattoos are literally suing the uh, toy company because they put the tattoos on the on the damn toy. Yeah, because it's their art. I'm like, but he paid for it, so what the hell's the big deal? Yeah, so I mean, they're making I money it, off of his art. I ought to be able to put my picture out on anywhere, you know. Yeah, but weird stuff in wrestling, bro. Yeah, and they're like with. Honk, he had the Pepsi thing. I understand yeah, that. that but I could get. Like, you got some flowers and oh, a skull yeah, head. Uh, you know? G.I. Joe's Cobra Commander. Yeah. They don't want his arms, too. So, so yeah. you got to be real careful about commercial stuff like that. It's crazy, man, for sure. But well, I just remember weird things with Animal. And he would always go, tell him about it, Hawk. <laughs> so that I remember, too. Yeah. He always yeah, said that. It wasn't sure. he was known for five star man. He did power stuff. You yeah. remember doing the press? Yeah, he slam, was the better promo. A shoulder block. You know, it's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. I remember in the ring. But I mean, we got we got to thank Animal for Zubaz. <laughs> I mean, legit. I know. I mean, that's yes. The, there was that's like his company. You know? Yes. So, and there were a lot of wrestlers that made a lot of money off of them. God, they're ugly. I think I still got a pair in the yeah, closet. I've somewhere. never owned a pair, but I'd like to. Be, I had one. It'd be fun. I wrestled him like one time. I was like, this is a I was scared to death. Yeah. Everything was going to be hanging out at one point during that match. So I went, didn't do it again. So, yeah, we probably wouldn't advise that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh. It's one of those when you have your mask on, you just pull it on up above your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, yeah, so that was cool. Uh, how did you do at the toy show? I didn't make no money, uh, but I picked up two action figures. I wish I'd have brought them with me. I thought about it, and I just forgot. But I picked up uh, Vader and uh, Mankind. Cool. Uh, but it was Mankind in the old leather, you know. Yeah, the, the Mankind mask. outfit. It wasn't the, the, the uh, suit and tie Mankind. It was like Mason the Mutilator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one where he's playing the piano and playing with a rat named... What was the rat's name? I have no idea. I can't Squeaky remember. Squeaky or something. No, it was like Maurice or something. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. Maurice is a rat? I, it started with an M. I don't remember her name. <laughs> but it was named after a girl. But, uh, anyway. It was a, as a matter of fact, it's Jim Cornette's rat. It was a pet rat. No, I that's knew. George. Was it George? Jim okay. Cornette's rat's George. I'm okay. pretty sure that's Well, I think they changed the name yeah, in WWE, sure. though, but I'm just saying. But he don't like rats. He'll, he'll run from them. Although my favorite cartoon is like Ratatouille, <laughs> so it's kind of funny. But, and Biker but, yeah, Mice from Mars. I found those, and I mean, I paid two bucks a piece on them. One was worth 10 and one's worth like 30 yeah, cool. So, Well, I got a uh, Ted RCD LJN. I needed that for my collection. Um, I'm sure I needed others that the guy Ted had. Ted who? RCD, you know right? Yeah, no. I don't know. <laughs> Ted somebody. Teddy Hart's daddy, I'm pretty sure that's... DBIC? No, no. Teddy Hart's... Ted, Teddy Hart's daddy is not Ted DBIC. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you said it. I was like, what? Pretty sure his name's Ted Arcidi. Is it? He was only in WWF for a small amount of time, and that's kind of the funny thing about him actually getting an action figure was like... <laughs> okay. But, uh... I'm, I'm pretty yeah, he sure he was like a Hart brother-in-law, right? No, I don't even think it was ever acknowledged. Oh, okay. Like, this was like early 80s like no i'm just saying but he was in the yeah i mean the technically family, yeah brother i mean he's teddy hart's daddy yeah. if i'm not mistaken i'm pretty sure that's who he is because when you first showed me the action figure i thought it was dr death yeah because it looks a lot yep. like him yep. and i could be wrong so if i'm wrong somebody correct me in the comments but yeah. i don't think i am um but there was a lot of good toys at the mm -hmm. toy show as far as it went i got that i got um i got some garbage pail kids funkos those were pretty cool. You had a bunch of damn Funkos. Yeah, I got I, I I traded for a bunch of Funkos there at the end. I don't remember what all I got, but I ended up with like a couple bags. Like a couple guys had like just loose wrestlers. And I'm like, hey, I'll just trade you for everything you got there. Uh, and I went through some of them, and there was a few cool ones in there. The coolest one I saw you get was the uh, Randy Orton with the, the Evolution T-shirt. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I know, that's I got, actually uh, probably kind of valuable. I got Dean Ambrose as a cop. I don't know where that come from. A movie. He did okay. a movie. Um. Oh man, I wish I could remember what all I got. We had to do a, we had to bring them and do a little, little toy show swap meet. This is what we bought kind of thing. But overall, I had fun. Thanks to you guys, I actually had a table. If not, I'd been in the parking lot selling on my trailer. So I'm glad you guys hooked me up. Well, it was a little bit of a cluster, but I think everybody got happy before the end of the day. Oh yeah, I mean, once you're in a room with that many toys, you can't help but yeah. be happy, you know. Um, and I got rid of some big items. I didn't sell very much stuff. 
Um, but you made some good swaps. But I made some really cool swaps. Got rid of a lot of big stuff that I had that just wasn't interested. Uh, I literally bought to sell, and once I couldn't sell them, I'm like, well, let me get some I want. So I just traded out. Uh, matter of fact, I had some Hot Wheels. I had like 40 Hot Wheels, and I literally traded them to a dude for a $15 WWE belt. <laughs> like, just because I didn't want to take them back home with me. Um, but we have more connection with, the, with wrestling. We can get rid of wrestling stuff right, quicker than most people can. Right. Like, so you, like, you were talking to the guy trying to trade him for wrestling figures, and he's like, how do you know so much about wrestling? I'm like, well, he does own his own wrestling promotion. <laughs> and I can, I'm a consultant for like 25 yeah. other ones, so. So, um, I'm like, yeah, there's the answer. Yeah. So. I was like, when most people are watching other things on TV where we're usually watching wrestling. Right. Um, now I just don't watch TV, so. Um, you're too busy I do three jobs man and each job has like three jobs inside those three jobs I got like 12 jobs so. you have to make specific time to watch wrestling oh, yeah. for us to talk about yeah. a lot I mean I listen to a good bit of stuff like um, I was listening to AEW Dark um, just because I could do that and drive and, and I try not to watch it as I'm driving because that's a no no but I, I listen to the commentary Taz and Excalibur are great Veda Scott is really good with them um, they had Ricky Starks on commentary with them a little bit, so that was fun. And uh, I did stop at a uh, at a gas station. I got to catch a few minutes of uh, Xander Gold and Ryzen versus Five and Ten. And I was glad I was able to catch that because I know a lot of those guys. Uh, Xander Gold was supposed to be in the Southern Eight this year, which unfortunately we had to cancel due to COVID. Um, yay! But uh, that would have been cool to have him. Hopefully we can still have it once all this crap goes away. Uh, but yeah, so that was cool. But yeah, I, I definitely don't have time to watch as much as I wish I could. But I do get to listen to this podcast, stuff like that. So. Did you get to watch that Eddie Kingston and uh, Ambrose match I sent you, Moxley? No. Uh, and, and, <laughs> Short, that's the reason I sent yeah. it to you. But like, and and I wanted small. to, except I'm not really a big Eddie Kingston fan, and I'm really... The more I think about it, I'm really not a John Moxley fan either. Um, it was just a short brawl. Yeah. And he made literally made my, uh, Kingston, he got him with like a choke out type yeah. thing. Uh, <laughs> Taz popped the whole internet, I think. At one point on Comtrigger, he says, Eddie, yeah, Eddie's got summer teeth. And he said, what? And yeah, some are white, some are black, some are here, some are not. And like everybody in the commentary booth just starts laughing like... <laughs> So that was pretty funny. So uh, Eddie Kingston's got summer teeth, but uh, I will say, I, I've heard a version of that. And you you sent me the clip of uh, John Davis versus Fred Yeha yes. off of the WWN site, and that Some, was an uh, Eddie Kingston hosted show. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened. He's like, good on commentary. Yeah, he does commentary a lot. I don't know if he like hand picked these guys or invited these guys, if it was invitation or whatever. But uh, it was cool to see two guys from Great Southern Eight Pass and Fred J. High and John Davis square off. And man, did they square off. <laughs> Beat the hell out of each other. At one point, I he has John on the that. ground, and he's just giving him multiple punches to the damn heart. Yeah. I, I want to I wanna buy that if I can. Um, of course, I want to own it on physical God, DVD. I want to see not. it in person. Damn all that. Yeah, but it made me go, you know what would be cool would be like great Southern eight dream matches and book a show based on some matches. So if you're a fan of what we do with the great Southern eight, uh, let us know some guys you would like to see matched up from years past. You know, they don't have to be from the same year they don't have to be from the same state, but just, I guess the, the criteria is they had to have been in the Southern eight. So I think it'd be cool. I've seen, like I said, I've seen clips of the Fred and John. I've seen Ray Fury and Jake Parnell. And yeah. that was a banger of a match. I definitely want to want to book that. Um, is there any off the top of your head you could think of that would be good? Well, we've seen J.D. Jenkins, who was going to be in it this year, and Vordell Walker. So that, that would have kind of been a matchup. Mm. Um, but are there any, any that you could think of you'd like to see? Right off the bat, uh, John Davis versus Jeremiah Plunkett. That would be phenomenal. Uh, Bolt Brady versus Ray Fury. That would be cool. Uh, I know it's already happened, but I didn't get to see it. I wasn't at the show, but Bordell Walker versus uh, JD. Yeah. Because they beat the stuff out of each yeah. other at the clips I saw. I'd like to see Wes Warren and Josie Quinn. Mm -hmm. I think that would be cool. Uh, I'd like to see Matt Kenway and uh, Wes Warren. I think that would be cool. Uh, I'd like to see Josie Quinn and Sugar Dunkerton. I think that would be cool. Um, I'd love to see 
Man, there's so many. I know, there's a um, lot. I could sit here and name it off easy, but the original Southern Night winner, what was his name? Um, uh, Kyle Matthews. Well, he's retired, isn't he? He is, but he just came out for one special, <laughs> for one match. So he'll probably do it. So again. he might, you know. Yeah. Um, Kyle Matthews would be phenomenal. I'd love to have Corey Hollis. Like, uh, I mean, like Corey Hollis and Matt Kenway would be bangers. Like, that'd be amazing. So, so much. Gary J. Oh, man, like. I'd probably like to see Gary J. and John just because they hit so damn I'd like hard. to see Gary J. and Nightmare. Mm. True. That would be cool. Um, and, and I'll tell you a match. It's actually, it would actually be a rematch. Uh, one guy's retired, I believe, and I don't think the other guy wrestles a ton. He, he works in the SWA down in South Mississippi. But I'd love to see a rematch between Lucas Frost and Christian Hain. Uh, they had two matches. Uh, one a couple weeks before the Southern 8 that was really good. When the Southern 8 wasn't as good as the first one. Um, sorry about that, Lucas. But uh, I would love to see like the third match and just see if these guys could like bring it to a, to a whole other level. Oh, I think that would be amazing. Well, that makes Corey quite a costume team. Don't make it to the Southern Eight again. Third year for Corey. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Corey, but it's a hell of a weird coincidence. Corey is. Like, it's so just we jinxed. put him in the Southern Eight and you cars the world on coronavirus. Yeah. I, I, I say this a lot that Barrett Brown's like the unicorn uh -huh. for the Southern Eight. Uh, for a while, it was Steve Anthony. We finally got Steve Anthony in it, and I'd love to have Barrett in it. But like the last five years, he just schedules didn't line up. But I think Corey's the real unicorn because literally booked for three years and <laughs> still haven't played. Well, needs it. to win this other eight. <laughs> if he showed up, it would be a win. <laughs> like, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Jesus. So just run into the battle roll and throw everybody out and win something, that you know? Uh, hey, poor Corey. Poor Jesus. Corey, indeed. Poor Corey, indeed. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's. I, I think that would be cool. Um, to do like some dream matchups or something so um, Ego when we finally get back to business or whatever and we're allowed to rent the buildings we were renting um, I think I only want to do like maybe four to six shows and uh, I'd love for them all to kind of have themes so I know two of those shows would be uh, you know the, the past do great Southern 8 that we had to cancel but then the next Southern 8 but I'd love to do like maybe a women's Southern 8 maybe like Southern 8 dream matches um, the women seem to be the hardest one, man, trying to book them all yeah. around, especially Southern women. Yeah. I don't know why, but man. It's tough. Um, I've always, like, the, the brainchild behind the Southern 8 was, when it first was an idea, was to do a masked version. So I'd love to pull that off with a masked Southern 8, um, or like a masked, it was originally going to be called like the masked Indy 8. So like MI8 playing off like Mission Impossible, so that's how long ago it was. Um, but uh, I'd love to do that. Um, so so maybe we can get some theme shows like that in uh, and just do a bunch of tournaments and see what happens. Sounds good. So uh, MLW Unleashed, uh, first time we've watched that. No, un Underground. Or underground. Unleashed. It's underground. underground. MLW Underground. Uh, the focus was um, what? Mike Awesome versus... More, uh, is it Morishima? No. No, Morishima. Okay. Ko Kojima? Kojima, that's it. Man. Sorry, uh, but Japanese wrestlers, man, I get them mixed up. Yeah, so that was pretty hard hitting. Yeah, for sure. Beat the hell out of each other. Um, we got to see Jerry Lynn versus Kid Romeo. And as uh, Joey Styles said, if Kid Romeo beats Jerry Lynn at the MOW event, it may be an upswing of his career. After uh, he had already been, after been WCW, WCW. Champions, <laughs> tag team champions. So uh, that was pretty cool. It was a decent match, though. Yeah, I, I yeah, haven't I seen it. a lot of Kid Romeo. Uh -huh. Um, and I don't even know if he wrestles or whatever anymore. Like, it took me a minute to realize who he was. I just, yeah. I'm like, this guy was in the dying days of WCW. Yep. Like, kind of like when Air Perez and AJ Styles yeah. and those guys were there. So, uh, uh, I don't know where he went after that. Maybe he just said to hell He went to MLW. It. Well, I mean, after <laughs> MLW. Because um, I didn't see him anymore. I don't remember Ring of Honor or anything like that. No, happened. I don't either. Um, the cool thing was, like, um, Jerry Lynn was with Christopher Daniels and comes he was out the he, evil new elf e show. the evil elfin <laughs> show uh, and he was saying how Paul London you know was scared to face him because you know his dad was in the hospital and he decided to go there so to come wrestle and how like how much he had sacrificed and you know his dad had heart surgery and he went to wrestle his kid was born he was wrestling like I like and, Joey Styles I think he needed to get his priorities <laughs> straight not <so>. Paul <laughs> yeah, agreed 
Um, but yeah, it was it was a pretty good episode. Um, and then you said there was a surprise ending. Yeah, um, uh, right after the Mike Awesome match, Carino comes out because they did the backstage segments where he's like, "I hope you win, but you got to promise I'm the next champion." You know, I'm yeah, the next he did it to both guys. Yeah, like, and he did to both of them, and he got awesome. He's like, "You promised me I could have it anytime I want it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, "I want it right now." And Cole Cox, Mike Awesome. <laughs> So Mike beat Kojima, so, became the new MOW champion, and then Carino screwed awesome. Well, well, at the end, what happened was the Four Horsemen, uh, Extreme Four Horsemen, come in on him. But they were more or less just a distraction. Like, he clotheslined one, he bumped the other one, turned around, and Carino hit him with super kick. Yeah. And I mean, it was anything goes Max, so technically it didn't cheat. Right. I mean, and they were already using chairs tables. and tables and everything else. So, like, I didn't know that match had ever happened with Carino and Awesome. Uh -huh. I, I was a huge Mike Awesome fan back in the day, and... I like uh, Reno too. Like, yeah. oh yeah, not necessarily his Carino. wrestling, but just him, his, his yeah. promos and stuff. He's like, he's he a reminds bleeder. me a lot of MJF as a heel. Yeah, because he wasn't scared to be a heel. Right. And he's like, you buy my t-shirts, I don't care. But you know, but uh, as far as the show went, I missed the rematches. Good, good show. The behind the scenes stuff. Like, I have more better to say about MLW's behind the scenes promos, all that put together. Even the way Carino grabbed a little other Japanese guy and took him back there. I was like, it was a little bit of comedy, but it wasn't taken overboard. Right. Uh, I mean, Carino is a little bit of comedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, the guys, uh, the, the, ch the champion says, he's like, wait a minute, you speak English? I right, get the hell out of here. Yeah, so that was, I mean, it was cool. Uh, but MLW is always behind the stage stuff. It's just yeah. always good. Yeah. Well, just, you know, you got these matches or that would, would be cold matches going in so you're just trying to give them something mm -hmm. you know but man when they went down to list of the top 10 i mean it was sabu it was mike awesome it was just everybody from back in you know? the the only guys that really wasn't was like uh paul london michael shane were on there i think christopher Daniels yeah they were ring there. of honor guys at yeah. the time but it was cool because like la parker was number six i'm like only took him like 17 years to find <laughs> his idol so. but that's back when like he was skinny la parker yeah well, that's like I really my size now, you know. You know? So, but it's it just amazed me at the damn card. I'm like, oh yeah. my god, it's cool, man. Like, it's kind of like AEW. You don't realize what a stacked roster they had uh -huh. until you really looked at that's it. That's it, man. That's it. So hopefully we can get on board, and have a stacked roster one day. So if anybody wants to invest in a wrestling company, let me know. Yeah, get rid of this <laughs> damn virus. <laughs> Invent the cure. But, so. Yeah, so I have anything else. I guess that's about it, huh? Yeah. I still can't figure out why AEW can't book a monster right. They refuse. Ah, uh, speaking of uh, a monster, congrats to Ursa Major. He won a uh, tournament to become oh, the yeah. new Battle Zone Capital City Champion. Yes, he so, did. Uh, Who did he of Frankie Thomas in the first round. Christian Blake in the second round, J.D. Jenkins in the third round. So, Ursa came night. out swinging. He came out working. He came out to prove a point. And I think the point was was proven. I mean, he walked away the last man at the end. Uh, Captain Cardio, you know, as I like to call him. And he definitely had his workout, man. Like, I mean, three top guys in the South. And, and Ursa beat them all. So, just think of what a focused monster this guy could be. Like, if he could just get, you know, uh, the right uh, leadership. Oh, yeah, uh, Jim made, Sterling, that helped. Well, it did help. Uh, put him on the right track. But uh, maybe Jay Andrews needs to come out of uh, retirement. I did leave the Nightmare to be a uh, undefeated monster. Yeah, it's kind of weird if Nightmare is the one giving him advice. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody rabbit. Well, I'm telling you, that bastard is smart, man. Uh, dude's so intelligent, if only he had a voice. Sure. So... Uh, in the mind of madness. Yeah, I think his favorite word's bloody rabbit right now. Um, where that came from, I don't know. Maybe it's what he's trying to place his order or something. I don't know. He's hungry. So, uh, congrats to Ursa. And if somebody sees Nightmare, get him a bloody rabbit because he seems That's to like him. Sweet. So, uh, till next time. Watch wrestling. Watch wrestling.